Hello everyone, my name is Faye and happy October. I have decided to take part in the 31 days of Halloween and today we are starting off with the crimes of Nathaniel Bar Jonah. Nathaniel in his late years was a very big man weighing in at 300 pounds and he was quite intimidating. Um, he lived in Montana town of Great Falls um, but I mean from his early life he was never really a normal child. He was born as David Paul Brown in 1957 and he was born in Massachusetts and I mean from I mean very early on there was always signs that he wasn't the same as everyone else and it all sort of started in 1964 on his seventh birthday Nathaniel received an Ouija board. Why you would give a seven year old an Ouija board I don't know but however he used the board to lure in his five year old neighbour into the basement by promising that they could play with it. When they reached the basement, it's there that he then tried to strangle the girl. Um, luckily her screams alerted his mother who made him stop. Although nothing became of the incident because his mother just assumed he didn't know what he was doing. The next incident that happened was in 1970 and he's now 13 years old and promised a six year old neighbor that they would go sledding together. Nathaniel led the boy into a secluded area and then sexually assaulted him. This behaviour then became a pattern for Nathaniel, however as he grew older he just developed a more sophisticated technique to lure in his victims. In 1975 Nathaniel would have been 18 years old and he approached an 8 year old boy on his way to school. Nathaniel claimed he was a police officer and lured the young boy into his car where again he began to sexually assault and strangle him. Nathaniel pretended to be a police officer became quite a normal thing for him and that is how he tended to lure in all his victims. Luckily for the young boy, um, a neighbour had spotted him being abducted and called the police. Nathaniel was arrested for abduction but only sentenced to one year probation. At this point I'm sure he thought he was getting away with it all, he was 18, he'd already committed multiple crimes and only given a smack on the wrist for an offence he'd been of half of the offence he'd been caught for. The light sentence actually gave Nathaniel a confidence that he didn't have previously and three years after his sentence again he abducted another two boys from the cinema. He did so again by claiming he was a police officer and he told the boys they were under arrest, handcuffed them and then took them to a secluded area and started molesting them. Because of the situation of there being two boys this time, so there was two victims rather than just one, Nathaniel decided to strangle one of the young boys and when he was convinced he was dead, he put the other boy in the boot and drove away. Although what Nathaniel didn't realise was that the boy he'd strangled had actually survived the attack and ran for help. It didn't take the police long to find Nathaniel and when they did, the second victim was still in the boot of his car. This time he was charged with a bigger sentence um, of attempted murder and was actually sentenced to 18 to 20 years in prison. From my findings, um, at this point he still hadn't been charged with any rape or child molestation charges, um, just the, like the year probation and this one. But while in prison, Nathaniel began meeting with a psychiatrist and after hearing about his fantasies, which involved murdering, dissecting and eventually eating children, the psychiatrist recommended that Nathaniel be moved to a mental hospital. After being moved to the mental hospital in 1991, a judge looked over the psychiatric evaluations and somehow found him not to be dangerous, a dangerous threat. For some reason, the judge agreed to release Nathaniel as long as he'd moved to Montana with his mother and it was recommended to him that he seek psychiatric help, although I don't think he ever did. Out of his 18 to 20 year sentence, Nathaniel only served 13 years and at the point of his release he was 34 years old. And I'm sure looking at it now, the judge realised he'd made a bad decision because just days after he was released, Nathaniel saw a seven-year-old boy sitting in a parked car and managed to force his way into the car. When he was there, he tried to smother the boy by sitting on top of him. And Nathaniel was a big guy at this point, so he'd gained a lot of weight whilst he was in prison for all those years. And I mean, he could have killed him quite easily. However, luckily the mother did return and stop Nathaniel and Nathaniel was very quickly arrested. After this offence, 
For some reason, no one from the Massachusetts court followed up with the probation officers in Montana and Nathaniel fled to Great Falls as quickly as he could. The reason he went to Great Falls supposedly was because he wanted to experience the same ex experience as the Jewish people there, but then also later claimed that he'd always been Jewish. Um, however, this was never confirmed. When he did move to the Great Falls, this is when he decided to change his name. Um, I guess just so that he could mix in and no one would know who he was. A few years later, in 1996, a 10 year old Zachary Ramsey disappeared on his way to school. His parents filed a missing persons report, however the local depart police department weren't familiar with this kind of crime and with only a few leads the case just went cold. At this time Nathaniel was living nearby in an apartment complex. From his apartment he had been secretly luring in young boys from the area to his apartment before sexually assaulting them. In his apartment he'd even installed a pulley from his ceiling where it's believed he had hung one if not more boys from the neck. Um, before whilst murdering them. These crimes went on for years undiscovered and no one spoke of them and Nathaniel was just getting away with it which was only increasing his confidence. One woman did start to become suspicious after her child suddenly became withdrawn and angry after spending time with Nathaniel but no one thought anyone in Great Falls would ever be molesting anyone and on top of that no one thought Nathaniel or anyone else in Great Falls could be a murderer. To get people to trust him and on his side, Nathaniel went out of his way to make food for his neighbours. However, the neighbours did start to notice the food was full of strange meat that they couldn't identify and when confronted, Nathaniel just told them it was meat from a deer that he'd hunted himself. But no one had ever seen or knew of him going hunting. In 1999, and at this point 42 years of age, he was arrested outside a local elementary school, which I think in England is like um, a junior school, so like the upper years of primary school, I'm not entirely sure though. Um, and he was arrested because he'd been carrying a fake gun and impersonating a police officer, and that was the charge that he was arrested for. Um, they then, the police then went on to search his home and found a lot more than they were expecting. Inside Nathaniel's home, investigators found thousands and thousands of photos of children cut from magazines and also on top of that a bizarre journal that seemed to have been written in code and then they found a human bone as well. The journal was sent off to FBI to be investigated and decoded. While the police were looking into the possibility that Nathaniel had murdered the little Ramsey boy that currently sat, still sat at a cold case. At this point, the other neighbours also came forward with allegations that Nathaniel had been molesting their children and Nathaniel was very quickly charged with ki kidnapping and sexual assault. By the time the trial began, the FBI had successfully decoded Nathaniel's journal. Inside his journal, he had described his obsession with torturing and murdering children. There was a list of 22 names, eight of them were known as his earlier victims and most of the rest were local children and unfortunately some of them were just never identified. When they looked further into the journal, it had detailed plans of how he was going to cook and eat children with the names of meals such as barbecued kid or sex a la carte or my little kid dessert and one of them was even named lunches served on a patio with the roasted child. Whilst looking through his journal and searching his home, police then also found a meat grinder in the home and putting it all together it just raised a very very dark suspicion. When this all came to light, the neighbours then obviously thought back to the strange meat they had eaten that Nathaniel had given them and they wondered if Nathaniel had murdered Ramsay and then fed them his flesh. Nathaniel denied he had even killed Ramsay and unfortunately was never enough evidence um, to prove the allegations of cannibalism but there was more than enough circ circumstantial evidence to make everyone wonder and suspicious. The charges for Nathaniel murdering Ramsey were actually dropped um, again because there was just not enough evidence but also because the, the boy's mother claimed that she didn't think he'd done it. So with all the other evidence um, instead of giving him individual charges Nathaniel was sentenced to 130 years in prison for molestation charges. Other towns wanted to take their own forms of justice. One resident 
told the press that if Nathaniel was ever released, his life wouldn't be worth a plug nickel around here. However, no one got the chance at Nathaniel as he was found dead in his cell in 2008 at 51 years of age and he had died from cardiovascular disease. Still to this day, no one knows exactly how many children Nathaniel killed or molested um, and he's a possible suspect in numerous murders in Massachusetts, Wyoming and Montana but none have ever been solved. And that is the crimes of Nathaniel Barjona. He was not a nice man, he was very intimidating and apart from the one girl seemed to always go after young boys, I don't know if it was something to do with when he was younger but that's what I could find. I hope you enjoyed my story today and I will see you tomorrow. I will link all of my socials in the bar below and thank you for watching. Bye!